I promised to do a video on uh, soldering surface mount parts, and I will go through uh, how I put them down by hand with a soldering iron, how I use my uh, oven, how I use a hot air station, and how I use a hot plate. And that'll give you an idea, maybe he'll hopefully get you started, and I hope by the end you won't be afraid of surface mount. So we're under the microscope, and this is a ruler with one millimeter markings. So we want to choose a soldering iron tip that's small. Here's the soldering iron tip that I normally use for through hole work. And you can see that it's a chisel um, tip, and it has about a 1.6 millimeter width. So this is way too big to do most um, surface mount stuff. You want a, you want a finer tip. And here's a straight tip. Uh, the tip is certainly less than a millimeter, and uh, this should work just fine. Now, the other tip that I have that's my favorite is this uh, crook, this uh, curved tip. Uh, it comes that way from the factory. It's a curved tip, and it's very, very fine. And that's the one I like to use because I can hold my hands naturally. So I should also use a, a thin solder, a fi finer gauge solder. Um, that will help also. The components we'll be soldering on are 0805 size, and you can see that the uh, tip is uh, is small compared to the, to the pad of the uh, surface mount part. So let's get ready to solder down a part. I'm right-handed, so I like to put the uh, uh, soldering iron in my right hand and the tweezers in my left hand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, put some solder on the on the pad that's on the right. Just put a, a glob of solder on that pad. Then we're going to pick up the part and we're going to bring it in uh, and heat up that blob that we already have. We're not going to apply any solder to the part. We're just going to slide the part into that pool of solder. And then once we get it into place, we can reach around and uh, solder the other side. And uh, there you go. So don't worry if your soldering doesn't look pretty, it's still going to be functional. And don't worry if your part uh, is not exactly centered on the pads, it will work as well. So the next method we're going to be using solder paste. Uh, this is my preferred solder paste. This is Kester EP256. And it is a uh, 6337 uh, tin lead alloy. And you can get it in these hypodermic needles. Uh, I think these are uh, half an ounce or an ounce, something like that. So I buy them from cmlsupply.com. And uh, normally solder paste comes in big batches. And they take these big batches and make them into small little batches like hypodermics and um, so you're able to get small quantities for home use and you get a hypodermic needle and uh, I think you get a couple couple nozzles and a couple needles um, so I'm using the brown one here all right so you're gonna need some good magnification I like to do this under the microscope um, and you need to put a blob of solder on each pad and basically you kind of want to fill each pad I've found kind of a Kind of a nice blob on on each pad. I'm not I'm not doing a very good job here in this video because I'm having to look through the look through the uh, camera instead of through the eyepieces of the microscope. But uh, it should work out fine. You just need to blob them up. Once you've got the uh, once you've got the solder blobs everywhere you need to, then you need to start uh, putting down the parts. And when you put the parts on, they'll kind of um, hit the solder paste and they'll kind of float above the board and you kind of give them a nudge to seat seat on the board. You kind of want them smashed down. If you, if you don't smash them down, then they can lift up on you. So it's, it's better to smash them down is, is what I've found. And you don't need to be super accurate about getting them on here. You'll find out that the surface tension of the solder will pull the parts into place. And we'll see that after we're done, uh, after we're done with the reflow. Okay, so for the first experiment, I'm going to be using my uh, my uh, reflow oven. Uh, this is a T962, 
and it's had the uh, uh, it's had a bunch of hacks done to it. I think I've mentioned that before, but uh, uh, it's it's had the software replaced and it's had some hardware replaced, so it's not the uh, not the normal. Um, here's here's a uh, here's the software running. You enter a profile, so you tell it. Uh, this is minutes in the x-axis and temperature in the y-axis. So for one minute, two minute, three minute, four minutes. So it ramps up in temperature between zero and three minutes. And then it kind of holds that temperature from three to four minutes. And then four, five, and six, it's ramping down. So you can get these profiles off of lots of different manufacturer sites and stuff. This 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 profile just seems to work for my setup. Here you see at, uh, at minute one, we're, we're, we're cold. The solid line is the the temperature that we are currently operating at, and the and the dotted lines are the are the profile that we want to accomplish. So after two minutes, we're we're approaching the the, the temperatures that we want. At three minutes, we're up to the temperature that we want, and then uh, we hold at that top temperature, and then we start to ramp down again. And then once it uh, gets to a cool enough uh, temperature, it beeps and lets you know that you can take the parts out of the oven. And uh, you open up the drawer and there's your board and it's all set to go. So under the microscope, you can see that the parts have rotated to their correct angles. The Just the surface tension of the solder paste does that and it looks it looks great. Um, and you you can experiment with the amount of solder that you that you place down. You kind of have to just get a feel for it for your process of how much solder is too much and how much solder is not enough. All right, uh, the next method we're going to be using is the hot air station. Uh, these are super cheap. I think you get these for like thirty five dollars or something. They're just, they're just they're just really really cheap. And they come with a couple nozzles that you can put on the. Uh, uh, put on the the air gun. I usually just have one on there, and it just seems to be fine. It's just a straight round nozzle, um, and you can set the uh, temperature of the um, of the iron, and you can also set the amount of air that flows. And so I have mine set to three thirty and about three and a half on the airflow, and uh, I don't know. That's just what works for me. And when you uh, remove the gun from the holder it's magnetic uh s magnetic switch and when you remove it, it it heats up and then when you place it down it, it cools it down slowly so um to uh cool off the, the coil inside the uh the heating element you're gonna put the solder paste down and the part down exactly like you did before but this time we're just gonna heat it up with the hot air instead of the oven so the other processes are exactly the same. So here we have the parts already on the board, and then uh, you just uh, hover the uh, hover the hot air gun. Uh, up, oh, I don't know. I was about an inch away, maybe uh, above the parts, and just kind of slowly get the whole board warm. So just kind of move it back and forth, and just kind of heat up everything and get everything kind of warm, and then uh, start. Uh, uh, being stationary over over a part and it'll it'll heat up it'll heat up more and then and then you'll see it when the uh when the solder actually starts to uh starts to melt you'll see the uh the cotter the 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 solder paste go from uh kind of a uh a, a dirty gray color into a bright shiny uh, metallic color and so that uh that one's done and then move over to the other part and start doing it to that and uh, just keep applying heat until the solder starts to melt. And then the uh, surface tension takes effect and pulls the parts into where they're supposed to be. And poof, uh, there you go. Now you have uh, soldered down parts. So the final method is going to be using a hot plate. And I've seen this done with a kitchen hot plate and an actual frying pan. An actual frying pan. Um, and so you don't need fancy equipment. Um, I happen to have this little uh, lab hot plate, so I'm going to use that. And um, I've seen a little tiny one being used at Adafruit, like a two inch by two inch little hot plate that they use at Adafruit. It's really, really cute. Anyway, um, so this one is super easy. You put the parts on the board, 
you put the parts on the board as you did before with the hypodermic. They put them down exactly the same way, and then you just throw them on top of the hot plate and wait. Uh, it does take a while for your hot plate to warm up, uh, a few minutes, and then you just stare at it, <laughs> and you watch. And finally, um, here at the very, very end, you can see the parts, the solder start to melt, and the parts suddenly, poof, will be soldered down. So you need to kind of watch the kettle while it's boiling, right? You, you need to look closely, and at the very, very last second, um, all the parts will be soldered down, and you take it off the hot plate, and you're done. Of course, I've only showed this on one 0805 part. Uh, different size parts require different techniques. Uh, ICs require different techniques. There's there's a, a learning curve, but I wanted to put this out to show you there are different ways of doing this. Don't be afraid. Take baby steps, you know, do the things you can do first. If you can put certain things down, put them down. If you need to do some things by hand, if you can do some things by hot air station, you know, you can mix and match as well. So anyway, I hope the video helped.